Well, Yolo may have his cairn on a hill, but I've got Ken on a hill. <laughs> Not literally, of course, but there is a hill here called Ken Hill, which is why the whole place is called Wild Ken Hill. It is about the only hill here. The rest of the area is pretty flat. There's 4,000 acres of farmland. Now, we're on the coast. You've got the beach here. Snesterton Beach is, is just below, just to the south of us. And then you've got all these different areas in the farm. You've got the wetland area, the rewilding area, the regenerative farmland, the woodland. They've recorded about 2,500 species here. It's a brilliant place. Place for wildlife and this is why. 25% of the site is being rewilded where they're letting nature take over with ponies, cattle, these Tamworth pigs and beavers which are all managing the landscape. And around the fields there's lots of field margins and hedgerows to boost declining farmland species like linnets as well as UK's fastest declining bird the turtle dove. And seeing it here just goes to show that this regenerative farming that's working alongside wildlife really is working. It's boosting the diversity and repairing the soil. You've got protected woodland there that borders the freshwater marshes who managed to boost target species like avis, black-tailed godwits. There's a, a huge variety of wetland species here. Spoonbill, fabulous bird to see. Egrets, lapwings. It may be a working farm, but it's proof that farming definitely can work hand in hand with wildlife. There is so much wildlife here, and as you've seen, a fabulous variety of birds. And our specialist team have been out over the weekends and at the end of last week locating them. So we've got some nests to show you. And you can see we've got quite a lot already marked on this map. And Chris has gone into our wildlife hub to see if he can see what's happening live on our cameras in that hub. Chris. Yes, Michaela, I am here in the Wildlife Hub. The Wildlife Hub being this bank of screens, which displays the images that are coming from all of those remote cameras that we've got set out at Wild Ken Hill. I'm here with Joe Charlesworth and Ian Simpson, our camera operators. Well, not only that, they've actually set the cameras up out in the field as well. And they are monitoring these, as they do with our story developing team, 24 hours a day for a full three weeks. And that's why none of the interesting behaviour escapes our attention. And and we're able to delve so intimately into the private lives of all of these birds. So why don't we do that now? Joe, what do we got? That's a nice little nest to start with. What about... Uh, Skylark? Skylark, number 16, Skylark. Let's have a look at that. We know that we've got three young in this nest. In fact, the adults came in and were feeding whilst Michaela was speaking a little earlier. You can see the down coat there. They've still got those sort of flabby gape flanges which identify them as youngsters that are developing. There are three. One is quite considerably smaller than the others. We're a little bit worried about that one, particularly if the weather's inclement and the adults aren't bringing in enough food. But they will undoubtedly fledge or semi-fledge. They'll dash off into the grass, presumably now, I would say, within about five, six, seven days. Joe, what else can we go for? Well, Ian's got the heron. Heron, yeah, let's go and look at our herons. They're pretty good. We've got three herons' nests down on the marsh. Perhaps unusually, they're not in trees, they're not on the ground, but they're raised up. Two have got two young, and this one has three young. So these are young herons. I know they look pretty much like the adults, but remember, these eggs were laid here way back in March. So these birds have already been spending quite a bit of time out of the nest, but it's a busy place. And have a look at this. This is what we saw earlier today. Lots of activity here when the adults come in with food. And you can see a lot of competition between the siblings. They're all trying to tempt that adult to regurgitate whatever it's got into a their gape. The table manners are atrocious, but it's clear to see that all three of these adults, uh, all three of those junks are doing very well, so the adults are bringing in plenty of food. In fact, keep your eyes peeled on that if you're watching our cameras, as you can do from 12 midday all the way through to 9.30 at night, because the range of prey it is quite extraordinary. Oh, I tell you what, look, barn owl, number 12. Joe, hit that button. One of the adults has appeared outside of the box. Now, last year, we had a camera inside the box and the birds decided not to breed for some reason. Nothing to do with our camera, I assure you. But here, we can see the adult on the outside. 
We've got to go inside now and have a peep, haven't we, Joe? Ian, oh, come on, cut inside to the barn owls. What number's that? Oh. We are oh, there they are. OK. There are five there. You can just about see all of their heads if you look carefully. On the right-hand side of the middle is the smallest one. They hatch asynchronously, so there's always a biggest one and a smallest one. And uh, you can see all the pellets in there where the adults have been spending the, the winter. Superb. What about the adult? The adult's still outside. Doesn't have any food on this occasion, but of course... Oh, oh no, it's hopping in. It's hopping in. Let's get back inside. Look at that. What a view. Sensational. And it might have stored food in there because they do cache food in the nest box. So it may be looking around for a small mammal that it left there earlier and it might be then going to feed the youngsters. OK, I think we might have time for one last nest before we go. Oyster catcher. I know there's an oyster catcher somewhere. Number 28. Ian, Joe, hit the button. So sleeping on the nest is this oyster catcher here. What a cracking view. Joe is using this. All these cameras are monitored from here. So Joe's delicate little fingers down here are delicate little fingers. I mean, what am I talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Joe's robust digits down here are steering us into that oyster catcher. Guys, thank you very much indeed. That was a treat.